His beautiful eyes stare into mine as the milk begins to flow. Those big blue eyes with the delicate brush-filled spots gaze at me with trust and adoration. In between gulps, he pulls back just a smile and coo. Warm milk drips down my skin, but I don't mind. My baby just smiled at me. He lifts his chubby hand to my mouth, waiting expectantly for my kisses. If I don't respond quickly enough, he grabs hold of my lip, eyes locked onto my own. At almost 11 months and nearly 24 pounds, this is still his favorite part of the day. Mine too. The bond that we share is precious, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. Some family and friends are surprised that I'm still breastfeeding, and they certainly can't imagine me nursing Benjamin past his first birthday. Over the months, I've heard the subtle comments. Oh, you're still nursing? How long do you intend to breastfeed? When he goes on the bottle, what they don't realize is that he's not going on the bottle. I want to give my son the best start I can nutritionally, relationally, and developmentally. My milk is God's formula, as our lovely pediatrician loves to say. Benjamin is learning to trust and to love at my breast. His tongue and jaws are gaining strength as he pulls the milk from me, all preparing his muscles for future speech. My mother nursed my brother and me into our toddler years. I dreamed all my life of nursing my babies. I've had to fight hard to fulfill this dream, harder than I ever imagined. I am going to cherish this time. There was a month of pumping in the NICU. The lactation consultant taught me how to hook up, operate, and clean the medulla breast pump and attachments. It was the hospital-grade breast pump, and as she described it, the Lexus of all breast pumps. <laughs> My emotions swung back and forth between gratitude for this device that enabled me to build and maintain my milk supply and resentment for the sterile, mechanical hum of a machine in the place of my baby. There was the exhaustion of pumping every three hours around the clock while recovering from a C-section, coupled with the emotional wounds that were always bleeding. There was a constant bottle of water on hand, drinking, drinking, drinking. There was the ravenous appetite as more and more calories went into milk production. There was a thrill of watching the small bottle slowly filling more and more as the days went by and my supply was built up. There was a bittersweetness of seeing my milk fed to my son through a feeding tube straight into his stomach. Tiny amounts at first as his tiny system adjusted. At least he was receiving nourishment from my body. There were the first few failed attempts at nursing and the slow process of learning to bottle feed with a therapist. Breathe, suck, swallow. There were the constant nagging fears that Benjamin might never breastfeed, as medical professionals reminded me of his poor sucking reflex that's common in babies with Down, with Down syndrome. There was a first precious time Benjamin latched on for a moment and looked up at me with wonder and confusion in his little face. How many ways are there for me to eat? I could almost hear him thinking. Then we were finally home, and there was a nipple shield to enable him to latch on. There was a struggle of holding his floppy neck steady, directing him to my breast as he rooted around, and holding the nipple shield in place. All too soon, there was a second trip to the hospital for open heart surgery and the extended two-week stay. Once again, there was the rhythmic humming of the Lexus pump around the clock. Once again, there was the stress, the exhaustion, and the fear I wouldn't be able to maintain my supply. This time, there was a heightened physical ache to hold my son close to my breast again and feel the sweet release. A few weeks later, there was a second homecoming and the supplementing with bottles of milk I had already pumped while I built up my supply again. In time, there were the first few awkward experiences of breastfeeding in public with my special nursing cover, complicated by the use of the nipple shield. Eventually, there was a long process of weaning Benjamin from the nipple shield for good. Benjamin's now a pro at nursing. He quickly latches on without my assistance, eager for the warmth and comfort of mommy's breast. 
the milk is paying off too. His arms and legs consist of delightful rolls. His tummy is big and round, and his cheeks are so plump and kissable. Strangers comment on what a cute and healthy baby he is. Healthy. That word is so special to hear. I doubt that they would ever guess the premature birth or the ventilator, tubes, and wires. They know nothing of the jaundice, the bloated stomach when his kidneys shut down, or the homecoming with nose cannulas and oxygen tanks. They would never imagine the open heart surgery and slow recovery. They have no idea about the ER visits leading up to the discovery of double hernias and the following surgery. They are oblivious to the onset of seizures, infantile spasms to be exact, and the six-week treatment of shots. Failed hearing tests and ear tube surgery never crosses their minds. They simply see a beautiful, healthy baby boy, which he is my little miracle.